COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. And Rick's our winner today. First off the mark to uh, say hello to all the isolators. How's everybody doing this evening? Um, interesting show today. It's just me today. Uh, I, if you follow me on social media uh, this morning on, on Twitter and on uh, Facebook, I said, yeah, I woke up on kind of a down, down way. It happens, right? Well, there's, I mean, there's stuff behind it too, but it happens. So... I thought that what I wanted to do was open that up to everybody. And because, because you have to know you're not alone when you feel down. There, there are some days you get up. I haven't, you know what? I've only had a day like this about f near to the beginning of, of isolation. It was about a week after we started the show. So I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. So I worked hard today to uh, bring myself back up. And that's what you have to be, right? You have to be your own mental health advocate. You're feeling down? Yeah, it's always great to get a hug and it's always great to have someone put their arm around your shoulder, but at the same time, you have to be the one that says, all right, Kevin, what are you going to do about it? Not just get up and pretend it doesn't happen, but what are you going to do about it? So I've gotten so much good advice on this show from so many incredible experts, doctors and, and uh motivational speakers and all that. So I tried to put some of it into action today. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. We're going to look at how you were feeling today and what you did to get yourself up today. So that's what we're doing today. Right now, let's find out what we are grateful for as usual. We start that and that's a great way when you're feeling down uh, is to look around and say, what am I grateful for? You could definitely say the day today. It was such a Perfect day today. It was beautiful out there. So uh, I am grateful for my family near and far. Lori is our first one on the grateful board right now. Uh, yeah, family is, uh, is, is everything, right? And you realize just how important they are now, especially if you're not able to see them. Uh, grateful for some quality camera time. Oh, we're, yeah, Mike, and we're going to look at some of Mike's pictures. I was grateful for some quality camera time today. We're going to take a look at those in a, uh, a little bit. Who else have we got here? Uh, Carol, hello. I'm grateful for the sunshine today. It's beautiful, perfect blue sky out there. Just gorgeous. Uh, I'm grateful for being here when I need to vent. <laughs> for you being here when I need to vent. Vent away, Dorothy. Just vent away. You're among friends. You're among families. Do it in a more positive way, though. You know, I just tell people how you feel. Sometimes that is enough to help you, is when you open up and say, you know what, I'm not feeling good today. So what do you do if someone tells you that? We always talk a lot about if you have depression or anxiety, what do you do, what do you say? I get asked the question quite often, what do you do when you live with someone with anxiety? And they tell you they're not feeling good. They're not feeling, you know, themselves. They're depressed, anything like that. Quite often what happens is you try and say something positive and that you think will help, but it doesn't. Nothing you can say will help at a time like that. So understand that first and foremost. The most important thing you can do is listen and say, I'm hearing you. I, I understand. I understand if there's anything I can do for you. What would, if there's anything, let me know. Do you want a hug? I can give you a hug. Do you want me to change something? But when it comes right down to it, most people just want you to listen. It is very therapeutic, at least for me. If I'm feeling down, feeling depressed, feeling anxiety, it's very therapeutic just to tell someone. Could you imagine stubbing your toe and having to remain absolutely silent about it and don't tell anyone about it? You're not allowed to do that. So you stub your toe, and, and I pick that because that's so painful, isn't it? You stub your toe, and you have to be quiet about it. No, 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 I want to yell. I want people to know I hurt my toe. Now, there's nothing that someone can do for you if you stub your toe, but you tell them anyway because it's that getting it out that makes it feel better. So if you're on the receiving end of someone who's living with depression, be patient. Be patient with them. Don't tell them to cheer up. 
That's not going to help and it's not going to happen. Just listen and be there. Carry some of the weight for them. They're carrying a lot of weight. They can't help being the way that they are. And I'm talking about someone who is living with depression. We, we just, you know what? We are who we are. And we would love to change it. We'd love to cheer up. It's not going to happen. So understanding goes a long way. Encouraging them after to get help. Don't encourage them if they come to you and they say, I'm having some sort of panic attack or episode right now. Well, you need to get some help. No, don't tell them. That's not the time to tell them. You say you understand. You go on your merry way. And then when they're in a better place, you say, let's talk about that. What happened? And what can we do about it? Don't say, what can you do about it? Say, what can we do about it? You know, when someone tells you to calm down, don't you hate that? Don't you hate that? So be patient. There may be somebody in your house right now who you have lost your patience with. It's never too late to make it better. It, it, is, it is a physical, a biological health issue. So give them that. Are you going to yell at a cancer patient for having cancer? Someone for having a cold? Tell them to stop coughing? No. This is the same thing. This is, this is completely, in many cases, uncontrollable. But I know how tough it is, though. I know how tough it is to be with someone with depression, and they're feeling that way, and they're feeling down. And this has happened before, and there's just nothing you can do about it. And they're bringing you down now. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. But if you love that person, then honor them by just listening and being patient. Don't send them away. Don't make them lock themselves in their room. It, it, it does get better, and it gets better with help. So let's get to what I did by listening to some of the experts today, because I wanted to take action. So one of the first things that, that really came to mind that resonated with me was the expert we had on last week, the professor from, uh, from the UK, who said, one of the best things you can do for depression, even for physical well-being, is to get out in nature. So there we go. Step one, get out in nature. I got out into nature today. This is my thinking spot. This is where I go when I need to do my thinking. Anybody familiar with Winnie the Pooh knows what a thinking spot is. So that, I stayed there for an hour, it was just beautiful, and I watched the water. I really, I just watched the water, and I, and I just thought how um, it is just flowing. And if it hits a rock, it just goes around the rock, and it keeps going, it doesn't stop. And I kind of imagined my, any low feelings I had in that water and just flowing, just flowing flowing through. The river's doing what it's supposed to do. My feelings are doing what they're supposed to do. Let them flow. And eventually they flow back out into the lake. And it gets better. Did you notice, by the way, the, uh, the water levels are much higher after that rain we had yesterday? I thought that river in that area was down significantly a couple of days ago. But uh, yeah, so please, again, be careful around uh, waterways with your kids, especially the Humber and the Dawn. Uh, slippery um, slopes. Always remember as well that if your pet goes into the river, most likely they can get themselves out. It, it is uh, not, it, we, so many humans get into trouble uh, by trying to dive in after them. Most likely they can get themselves, they can get themselves up. That's just a little safety, a safety message. So I did that. That felt good. Then another thing that you, you want to do is, you know, learn something new. So I went to step two. Here's some nerdy history trivia for you. I always saw this old school at the bottom of Cherry Street, well, not the bottom of Cherry Street, at Cherry Street and uh, front. Turns out this is the oldest still operating school building in Toronto. They had a girl's entrance and a boy's entrance, the Sackville Public School. It's still operating as Englewood Community School. I also found out that before there was a school here, Thornton and Lucy Blackburn lived here. They were slaves in the 1830s in Kentucky and escaped here to Canada and set up here in Toronto. They, they started a cab company, the very first cab company in Toronto. But you know what else they did? 
they made their home one of the end terminuses of the Underground Railroad. And they helped others escape. So much so, and, and, and such an incredible gesture, that, or gesture, so, such incredible action they did, that there's actually a similar plaque for them in Kentucky. And I wouldn't have known that. I, I was not aware of this story. And I would not have known that had I not just said, okay, I'm going to go and take a look at what that old building is. Because I go by it on the streetcar all the time, and I thought, what is that old building? So that, that's cool. And that lifted my spirits again. Now, it may depress you soon because I will be repeating that story for many people at parties and things like that. And um, yeah, I, I tend to drone on with useless trivia and useless facts. Another thing is to keep your mind active. And one way to do that is reading a book. And I haven't read for a while. I said, that's it. So I went and got Brian Greene's latest book. I've been wanting to read it since February when it came out until the end of time. I love Brian Greene. So I got the book and I've started it. I'm already a chapter in. And you know what? I, I, I feel better. I do feel better. So what did I do? I took action. You have to be your own mental health advocate. So I was thinking, let's have a session today. That's the title of the show today. We're doing a, a group session. Because it always helps when we're, we're together, right? And, I, and I, love, I love all the comments, and I'm watching them every once in a while. I can't watch them completely. And, okay, everyone keeps mentioning this after-COVID condo party. How did I get myself into... Okay, what? And, and I saw you all talking about it yesterday as well. Got to invite Tracy to, the, to your after-condo, your after-party. How did I... Where, where did I say I'm having a party here? Anyway, I think we should have a session together. But there's nothing worse than going to some therapy sessions in some community hall that is void of any color or pictures and there's just some plastic chairs around and coffee that's been sitting in that urn for six or seven hours. So I'm just wondering about a place that we could have a therapy session that was comfortable, that was conducive to being in the moment and having good thoughts and, you know, something to watch. Is there anyone, is there anyone who can get me a place like that? Is, is there anyone who can, what? Oh. Oh, I like that. That's, I like the, what, what's this? Kevin's Groovy Group Session. Okay. Hello, welcome to Kev's Groovy Group Session. You know what? I, the more I look at this picture, would that not be a perfect place for a session? Somewhere you could watch the fire? That's awesome. That would be a group session. I would have an after COVID party on, the, on here. So Kev's Groovy Group Session, so I put it to you today. I said, I am going to get out of this funk. What are you going to do? So here, here we go with some of the things that you did and you've passed on some pictures to me. So let's, uh, let's take a look at number one here. Here we go. So hold on. Whoa, there we go. Um, Kev's groovy group session. Oh, this is from S. Mare. Uh, did my meditation outside with my coffee and then loaded my kayak and went for a paddle. That's perfect. What happened to our picture? What happened, what happened to the group session? You know what happened. Parker's going here and he did something. What did you do? The group session is gone. People are going to realize that this is all, this is all phony. I don't want them to do that. Pay no attention to the curtain and what's behind the curtain. Where is it? Can we, can we bring it back? It's right at the, uh, up, up. No, not that one. Oh, that's it. Yes. Okay. Wow. Didn't notice anything. It's a problem with a live show. Did you really do that, or was that my fault? That was my fault. Okay. Uh, let's get to the next, the next one. Uh, here we go. The next picture. There we go. <laughs> All right. Here's from Paula Barton. Uh, instead of wallowing in the same, I hosted a happy hour for my coworkers. I like that. 
I like that. And what you can't see is there's a number off to the side that says 80. So day 80. I like that. Let's go to the next one. See what you were doing today. Uh, who is this one? Oh, this is our buddy Mike. Mike always goes out and takes pictures, and he's great, very good at it, and he's a rail buff. And uh, these are at some of the, uh, the old yards in, uh, in Cochrane. It's interesting, and for me, being a train buff, it's inter these yards are absolutely fascinating. They're almost like graveyards, and especially as trains start to fall out of favor here in, in, in North America more and more and more. And it's sort of sad, but at the same time, very interesting to go and, and check out some of, uh, some of these areas. Um, oh, charity. <laughs> uh, charity, charity put, put charities up. Charity did a typo. Can anybody spot charity's typo? Talking about Mike's uh, photography shots. Can anyone spot charity's typo? Or did you mean it, charity? Oh, there we go. Shots. There we go. All right, charity has redeemed herself. I like that. Got to be careful with spell check. Got to be careful with it. Uh, okay, let's go to uh, another picture right now. This one I could watch forever. This is from Linda Kelly. And what, this would be a great place to have a group session as well. Just watching chipmunks. We could put the chipmunks in the middle of that table and we could all sit around it and watch them all day. It's funny, isn't it? When you sit and watch fire, you sit and watch the lakes, you know, watch the river, that it just does so much to, uh, to help you. Do I have another one? Is there another one? Okay, let's take a look at this one. Oh, yeah, okay, this is from Carmen Roy, uh, Manicom. Went for a nice walk today, and that is the perfect forest. That, that is, oh, did, was there a, a thing again? The, I forgot to put, yeah, okay. Um, uh, Carmen, uh, it, it, that is a perfect, that's a perfect forest. That is a perfect forest, that is. Okay, um, you know what? I also, one thing that I did today was I took it easy. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to sit down, read my book. Uh, and I took it easy, um, ate a little better than I usually have been. So that was good. So that's all I prepared for the show today. So thank you very much for, for, for helping me. Because, because just telling you, like I said, helps me. Um, should we go back to the office? Let's go back to the office. There we go, just like that. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to call it an early evening. We will be back again tomorrow. So until then, thank you very much for joining us. Take care of yourself. It's the invisibility cloak. And take care of each other. Where did he go? COVID-19, why you do this to me? I don't need